good afternoon to all. It is a great privilege for me to come and talk to you all. At the outset itself, I would like to thank the organizers for this wonderful program. Can a teacher transform the nation? It is a very valid question. When we look at history, a lot of empires, a lot of fundamental changes were introduced, were implemented only through the efforts of the teachers. Perhaps the greatest empire in the history of India is the Mauryan Empire. Mauryan Empire was established by Chandragupta Maurya around 2,300 years back. That empire was established only because of the efforts of a noble teacher, a wonderful teacher, the most effective teacher in the history of the nation, that is Kautilya. When you look at history, you will remember Nandas were really very powerful, but the Nanda king dismissed his teacher because of certain reasons. The teacher was roaming in the streets, in the streets of Gangetic Delta. When he was roaming there, he went to one small village. He saw small village boys you know, looking after the cattle and in the evenings conducting certain dramas. So he was looking at the dramas with, a, with not with a lot of enthusiasm, he was looking at the dramas. Gradually, he was impressed with one particular actor, one particular boy there. So he chose that boy, picked him out, spoke to the parents, told the parents, this boy has a wonderful future ahead. You please hand over this boy to me. I will take him to Taxila, I will train him. He took him to Taxila, and after a few years, came back to Magadha Empire, came back to Patna, and dethroned the king and established the greatest empire in the history of India, Mauryan Empire. Teachers can really transform the society. And everybody has to be the best. I had the opportunity of attending one meeting which was addressed by our beloved former president, Abdul Kalam. There he posed a question to the distinguished audience. How India can be made the superpower, the developed nation in the world? Everybody came up with their own answers. But ultimately, right, everybody talked about a lot of things. Improving the educational standards, improving the innovation capacity, a lot of things talked about. But ultimately, the noble president, beloved president, he spoke a few words around 10 years back, still vivid in my memory. He said, whatever profession you are in, if you are the best in the world, Whatever profession, whether you are a doctor, whether you are an engineer, whether you are a teacher, if you are the best in the country, if you are the best in the world, in the chosen profession, India will become the most developed country in the world. Every one of us have the responsibility to make this nation a glorious nation. Teachers have a fundamental responsibility. I am a teacher. I am working as head of the department, political science in Government Arts College, Coimbatore. I conduct a free IAS coaching program. Around 400 study students are studying in the program. So far, 78 students have got through the exam. They work in different parts of the country. <laughs> you would have read the names of these cities, Beijing, Washington, DC, New Delhi, Amritsar, Trinelveli, Thiruvananthapuram, Imphal. All these cities you would have read in the newspapers. I also read the names of the cities in the newspapers. When I see the names of the cities in the newspapers, I am really happy. You know why? Because in all these cities, my students are working as IAS, IPS, IFS officers, working for the country. And I also conduct one more program, Empowering for Future. It provides skills, knowledge, and attitude empowerment to school, ch school children hailing from underprivileged background. So I meet lots of children, lots of youngsters. When I talk to them, I find certain things to be improved in their personality so that they can develop themselves and India can develop. Right knowledge is important. Right attitude is important. I can speak lots of examples from the experience of my students as IAS officers to tell you this truth. One particular point, Different kinds of students come to me. Some students, I ask them, what is your mark in 12th standard? What is your mark in college? 
the students who score very highly, they are very happy the moment I ask this question. They say, I scored 1,180 in 12th standard. And when I ask the students who scored less, the first, when I ask the question, they become very dull, not so enthusiastic. They say, sir, I scored only 800. But for me, everything is the same. Scoring 800, scoring 1,190, it is the same, provided you have the right attitude, provided you have the right determination. I will speak about one particular student of mine. Now he's uh, undergoing training in Nagpur in uh, revenue service. His name is Vinod. He came to me around 500 years, uh, five, five years back, he came to me. And he was with me for four long years. He went to IAS interview. Every year he wrote the exam. But he could not get through the exam. He could not get through the IAS interview. Whenever the results are announced, a lot of officers will speak to me. What happened to Vinod? They will ask me. And I was very uh, right disappointed. But around uh, one and a half years back, in the month of December, he came to me. He called me and said, where are you, sir? I said, I'm in the house. He came to me. He fell at my feet and he said, sir, finally I got through an exam. I got through Nabad. So now I am going to Lucknow for training. I was very, very happy because he worked very hard. He's a very uh, hardworking man. He's a very intelligent person. Somehow he could not get through the IAS exam. He got a job now. He went to Nabad, Lucknow for training. After some time, he came back to me and said, Sir, I have one more good news. I have got through, got through the RBA exam. I am going to New Delhi for training. Then after one month, he came to me. He said, Sir, I have got through IFS exam. Now I am going to Dehradun for training, Indian Forest Service. After two months, he came to me and said, Sir, I got through civil services. I am very happy now. This is how life goes on. You youngsters, you always work hard. Be positive. In spite of the hard work that you have, at times, success will not come to you. But remember, attitude is very important. Failure is very important. Failure is a stepping stone to success. You can say examples from history, examples from politics, examples from science, examples from literature. That failure always, if properly handled, will lead to success. We can speak about numerous examples for example, when you go ask NASA, the National Institute, that uh, advanced agency in uh, role model for science, you ask them which one is their greatest success. They will not talk about Apollo 11, which landed, moon, which landed man on the moon. They will speak about Apollo 13 mission. Actually, it was a failure, but they call this as a successful failure. So they consider that mission as really important, as really inspiring, because how to handle adversity, how to handle difficulty, how to handle failure, that is very important. When you have the right approach, India is actually the youth capital of the world. 70 crore Indians are basically youngsters and children. If we provide right knowledge, attitude, and skills to 70 crore Indians, definitely India will become a very, very advanced nation. And many people have asked me, why I am providing this free coaching program? Right, I'm not a rich person, but I'm not interested in money. They asked me, for example, if you want to look at my commitment, in the last 10 years, I have missed only eight Sundays. On all other Sundays, I am taking class from my students. Why I am doing this? I have a very firm conviction that in the years to come, the 21st century will be really India's century. If India is to be the number one power in the world, if India is to get advancement, if every Indian has to have the benefits of independence and the benefits of development, then all of us must be committed. You can be successful, right? I'm not saying money is not important. What is important, all of us have a responsibility to the underprivileged. We should show sympathy to the common man. Social service must be inbuilt in all our activities. Social responsibility is the need of the other. I take this opportunity to thank this August audience and the organizers for inviting me to talk to you all. Thank you very much.